Heather uh, here at SpaceX headquarters. Uh, but interesting note, yeah, normally those cargo dragons landing over in the Pacific, uh, and while this vehicle ultimately designed for crew, it's also carrying some cargo. It carried about 400 pounds of cargo up to the International Space Station, and it's been packed with a little over 300 pounds for the return trip home. And that's broken out across a couple of different areas. Uh, one of the more interesting ones, and one of the ones NASA's really keen on, is it's bringing back what we call utilization, so some science samples. It actually has mm. two bags, they're basically like coolers on board that are packed with these cold bricks that we're able to put uh, science samples in. So uh, the ones that are coming back home today using some of the human research projects on board the International Space Station is, uh, we like to say the astronauts are experiments themselves. We're always <laughs> poking and prodding while they're up there just to see how the human body changes and reacts in microgravity. And a lot of the samples from a couple of those uh, projects are coming home on Dragon today. Uh, also bringing home a couple of radiation monitors and uh, one thing that our program manager, uh, Kirk Shireman, for the space station program noted, uh, it's also going to have a fan pump separator on it, and that's actually a piece. Uh, it's a piece of the uh, spacesuits, the EMUs, the extravehicular mobility units. I'm from NASA, and we still use <laughs> way too many acronyms. Uh, and it's a piece that actually failed on orbit uh, some time back, and they're bringing it home to take a look at it. It was since uh, replaced with a spare unit, and we do have some spacewalks coming up in March. So. Uh, very busy time in space right now, uh, but right now kind of all focus on watching this dragon come home. So the next milestone that we have coming up in about seven minutes uh, is the trunk separation. Uh, we will take a break for a few minutes while we await that, so stay tuned and we'll see you in a couple.
Oh, so right now we're waiting to hear for that trunk separation again. Uh, we are expecting to get that call um, just on the internal nets uh, any moment now. That'll be the next major milestone, and then it'll be on to deorbit burn. Exactly. So we should have that call out any minute now. Uh, as we await for trunk separation, this is the last thing that Dragon has to do before it is able to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and splash down in the, in the Atlantic Ocean. That's right, yeah, the, the trunk not coming home, uh, but the rest of the Dragon capsule, the more important part, is going to be coming home. Mm -hmm. uh, the other stuff that Dragon's going to do before it does that final re-entry is close that nose cone, and we'll get through a little bit of that uh, soon. but. Uh, basically, that nose cone is going to protect that top part of the Dragon spacecraft, uh, the docking adapter, and also the guidance and navigation and control sensors. Um, so that's one of the last major milestones. Uh, that's another kind of departure from the cargo Dragon, which that nose cone gets jettisoned uh, during the launch during the launch phase. Um, but with uh, Crew Dragon keeping the nose cone all the way through, it helps in the actual reusability of the Crew Dragon uh, for future missions. Now that trunk section is unpressurized and uh, we are able to use it to transport cargo on the way up to the International Space Station, uh, but everything that comes back from station is put into the pressurized section. So we are able to jettison that trunk as it's no longer needed and uh, we're able to shed that extra weight. <laughs> and I think we just heard trunk separation. All right, so hopefully we'll be call. able to bring you visual here shortly. Actually, no, we're too far away from yep. station at the moment, so yeah. Yep. Uh, so next up is going to be uh, the spacecraft using some forward thrusters uh, to perform the deorbit burn. This is going to be a really major step because once that deorbit burn happens, you're coming home. You're like you're you're leaving <laughs> orbit and you're coming back to Earth. Can't and wait. that's going to put Dragon on a trajectory for that return. The burn will last about 15 minutes once it starts. So we're going to again continue to stand by. This is kind of the calm before the storm, if you will, where we're just waiting for things to really get into motion. Dragon's going to pretty soon do that deorbit burn. And then following that, it only takes about 45 minutes or so until it's in the water down in the Atlantic and ready to get picked up by the teams on the boats out there. So once again, we're going to continue to stand by. We're going to bring you these updates as they come in. But one more milestone down, just a few more to go, and then Dragon's home. So again, right now we're just standing by for this deorbit burn to start. We are expecting it to start in about a minute or so. And then after that, it's gonna take a little over 15 minutes uh, to complete. 
Yeah, so we have already jettisoned the trunk, as you heard us talk about a couple minutes ago. Uh, that was the last thing Dragon needed to do before it is able to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Um, and like we said, that'll be about a 15-minute burn, and then we will have parachute deployment and splashdown after that. So, uh, like Dan said, kind of the calm before the storm, we're going to have a lot of activity coming up uh, once we do pass through the re-entry burn. Um, but at this point, we should be getting confirmation of the deorbit burn uh, in a couple of seconds here. That's right. And once the deorbit burn is complete, it's just about, I'm trying to do quick math in my head as I look at everything, uh, but it's just about 40 minutes or so until Dragon's scheduled to be back down in the water. So it's, it's a pretty quick ride from being in outer space to being right back down in the ocean. And we just, just heard had confirmation of the deorbit burn. So like we said, uh, this will last about 15 minutes. So um, deorbit burn has begun. At this point, Dragon has begun to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. It's going to get a little toasty, um, but we're excited to, uh, to, for this to happen as it is the next step, the next milestone in its journey home. That's right. And again, ultimate destination down in the Atlantic Ocean and there are boats standing by. We'll go through all the recovery forces and everything on site, uh, but there is one main recovery boat. It's the Go Searcher mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to have all of the SpaceX recovery teams who are responsible for actually going out and picking the capsule up out of the water. Uh, that is a view of the Go Searcher. That was This is actually a camera view from one of the other boats that's in the area, uh, the Go Navigator that has the combined NASA team on board as well. Uh, so once we actually have crew on board, everyone's going to be on one boat, so it'll be a little bit tighter quarters. Uh, but you'll have obviously the SpaceX people to go and recover the capsule, and then the NASA people typically also bring along the flight docs and the nurses. Uh, anybody who's ever seen a, a landing in a Soyuz over in Kazakhstan is familiar <laughs> with that. Once the crew comes home after about a six month period, it's important we get a quick medical check out with them, just take the vitals, make sure they're doing okay and help manage as they readapt to Earth's gravity for the first time in you know up to six months or longer. So all everyone will be on one boat, but for today we do have two boats, so we'll get some additional views hopefully mm -hmm. uh, from those different cameras as we get to watch Dragon come down. But for now, we are in that deorbit burn, so we got a couple more minutes until that is complete, and then we're one step closer to Dragon being back. Yeah, so while Dragon is re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, we're going to pause for a few minutes uh, until the deorbit burn completes, so be sure to stick around and we'll see you in a few minutes.
about halfway through that deorbit burn. So again, we expect it to last about 15 minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, the visiting vehicle officer all, all the way back in Houston uh, was just reporting to the, the station flight director, again, that we were about halfway through. Uh, we're continuing to get a couple of uh, views from the boats. And again, those are cameras that are going to be tracking Dragon once it's coming down under those parachutes. Uh, and we're also starting to get, it looks like this is a view from a WB-57 airplane. And so we have a number of assets out there uh, off the Florida coast. Uh, again, there's two boats, or two ships rather, uh, both with uh, tracking cameras on board. And uh, NASA also flying its WB-57 aircraft, uh, typically used for high altitude uh, weather research and uh, other science missions. Uh, but it has a uh, camera affixed on it and should hopefully give us some views of Dragon coming down under those parachutes. So there on your screen, you see a beautiful shot of Go Searcher, which is our primary recovery vessel. Uh, there on the front part of the ship, you can see what would essentially be the crew's quarters uh, during the wait. Um, they could be out to sea, depending on how rough the waves are um, for a couple of weeks to just a couple of days, depending on the re or the splashdown point. So they're coming into the view um, on the right-hand side of your screen. At the top is actually the helipad. Um, for helicopters to land if we need to uh, take the astronauts to shore quicker than uh, just having them ride along on the ship. And really in something that I just absolutely love about this vessel is underneath that helipad uh, are actually medical quarters. So we're able to uh, get the astronauts checked out immediately after um, egressing from the capsule and we're able to check them out there and give them a warm welcome, uh, not on land yet, obviously, but uh, it's just such a, an incredible vehicle there that we're able to, to sustain so much activity uh, once the, while we're waiting for the astronauts to splash down and then obviously once they are on board. It's also important to note, so right now the teams are about 200 or so, give or take, uh, nautical miles off the coast. That won't be the case when we are bringing crew members back. Uh, that landing zone much closer in. I think it typically ranges out about 20 to 24 nautical miles or so uh, away from the port. So that gives them the capability to then get back in within just a couple of hours instead of the a little over a day that it's looking like it's going to take the teams to bring Dragon back after this mission. Um, but well, there we have some uh, views from Dragon as it is re-entering the atmosphere. It's, uh, it's pretty dark in space. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still in the midst of that deorbit burn. We're expecting that to take about five more minutes. So that's, that's pretty unique getting views from the spacecraft while that deorbit burn is still underway. But again, this is just the final maneuver, that final firing of those Draco thrusters just to bring Dragon out of orbit and set it up on a trajectory to ultimately splash down over there in the Atlantic whereas you were just seeing the recovery teams are standing by, ready and waiting to receive. <laughs> and again, this deorbit burn lasting, or planned to last about 15 minutes and 20 seconds. And this is just to ultimately carry Dragon out of its circular orbit. So right now it's been in a circular orbit just beneath the space station's orbit, we call it the co-elliptic orbit, uh, for the last several hours in this deorbit burn. It's going to radically change that planned orbit, uh, basically setting it up to intersect back down with the Earth, back down there in the water where the recovery teams are waiting. Now that we have a full view of the recovery vessel on the very right side of your screen, we can see a portion of the ship that we weren't able to see before. And that's actually the portion of the ship where uh, once the Dragon capsule is close enough, it will be lifted up out of the water uh, by that vertical piece that you see there. It'll actually actuate out over the water and lift the Dragon capsule up out of the ocean and then bring it back onto the boat and set it down into its nest. 
Uh, so pretty cool. Uh, this is this is new. Um, a new technology that we've installed on this ship specifically for our Crew Dragon missions. So it's a, the, like we said before, this is a demonstration mission and while our recovery team has been practicing for uh, recovery operations, this is obviously the first time that they will be practicing with a vehicle that's coming from space. So we're all very excited to be bringing you live coverage as all of this unfolds uh, over the next hour or so. And yeah, and to give you a timeline of that recovery period, uh, it's expected to take a little under an hour or so uh, for the teams to actually have the capsule back up on the boat, which in a situation where there's crew on board, that's about that hour to get the crew out of the water and onto the boat so they can do all of their initial medical checks and everything else that we typically do after crew members are returning from these long duration missions. The, the waves looking pretty calm though, looking like really good conditions out there uh, in the Atlantic. Again, they're a little over 200 uh, nautical miles off the coast of Florida, and they'll ultimately be bound back for uh, Port Canaveral, mm -hmm. uh, where the, uh, the spacecraft's gonna get brought back in and handed over to the SpaceX teams there where they're gonna begin processing and then pretty much getting ready to turn it around for that ascent aboard. Yeah, um, we've been monitoring the recovery weather uh, conditions over the last several days and now that recovery day has uh, has come upon us, we can see that we have beautiful skies uh, and, and rel well, in my unprofessional nautical knowledge, uh, relatively calm seas by, by my eyes. Um, but you know, it's really difficult to be able to predict what the weather is going to be like uh, at sea very far in advance. So we're all very happy to be able to have clear imagery of the recovery team uh, as, we, as we make progress here. I feel like we've lucked out with Florida weather so far <laughs> on, on this mission. All right, and we're here and there's about one minute left in this deorbit burn. So just about done with that. And again, this is just that final maneuver to begin bringing Dragon out of space and down to the ocean. We're still getting a couple of views from on board the Dragon spacecraft. That's what you're looking at right now. Now we're just going to stand by and listen for how the deorbit burn went. Should be wrapping up momentarily. So, like Dan said, we are waiting confirmation of the conclusion of the deorbit burn. Uh, it's been going on for the last several minutes, and like we said before, Dragon departed space station earlier today, performed a number of departure burns, and now we are hopefully just exiting the the final uh, burn, and that's the re-entry burn. Uh, and there on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see our recovery vessel waiting for uh, the splashdown of Dragon. Uh, once we exit the this, uh, once we exit the 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 re-entry burn, we will have parachute deployment. Um, the first one of those will be the drogue chutes, the smaller chutes that slow the vehicle down, followed by the main parachute deployment. And that will slow it down even further, allowing it to come to a, a, a slower velocity as it approaches the, the surface of the ocean. And we are being told that was a nominal burn. So the deorbit burn is complete. Dragon is on its way home. <laughs> and so the next thing that's going to happen is that nose cone on Dragon is going to get closed. We heard that process is now in work. And then it's time for Dragon to really get through the Earth's atmosphere and ultimately splash down. So uh, that's where the vehicle is going to heat up tremendously because again, you have to keep in mind Dragon traveling at thousands of miles per hour right now. And when it hits the thicker part of the Earth's atmosphere, uh, it's going to heat up tremendously from the friction. And this is actually video of the nose cone starting to close on the Dragon spacecraft. And again, that nose cone just closes to protect that top portion of the vehicle from all of the re-entry uh, events, not only the re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere, but also once it's down in the water. 
and that protects the guidance and navigation and control sensors on top of Dragon and also uh, that docking ring uh, that it uses to attach to the space station. So again, what you're seeing right now is the nose cone closing on the Dragon spacecraft uh, as we await for it to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. So that nose cone looks like it's just about closed. We'll wait for co final confirmation uh, that everything looks good with it. But then pretty soon, we're gonna be looking towards the actual entry interface. So that's again, where Dragon starts hitting enough atmosphere that it's gonna start heating up. Cause right now it's still high enough, uh, even following that deorbit burn that it's still not feeling those effects. Uh, but the atmosphere is gonna get thicker as it starts to descend and that's gonna heat the vehicle up. That's why you always have uh, this heat shield on the bottom of these spacecrafts. And that's why a lot of them are in these, uh, this conical shape as a lot of engineers I've talked to, they like to say physics haven't changed since the 1960s. Uh, when we made the spacecraft back then, it was for that sh it was mm -hmm. that shape for a reason. Uh, and so that's why it's so common to see this capsule design, just because of how you re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So we just heard confirmation that the nose cone hooks have begun the process of securing the nose cone into place uh, prior to that re-entry burn. Right, and so there's actually an anticipated time where you lose signal with the spacecraft, and that's just because as you're re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and you go through that intense heat, uh, plasma actually builds up on the outside of the spacecraft, and you can't mm -hmm. send or receive signals from there. So it's very common when there's people on board, you'll lose the voice communication between them and the ground, and you'll lose all the telemetry or the data streams that you have coming from the spacecraft to rooms like the Mission Control Center just behind us here in Hawthorne. So that'll be coming up. We're expecting that to happen at about 5, what time is it? 5.33 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> uh, so coming up in just about 20 minutes from now. Exactly. And so after we are able to get through that phase of the mission, like we said before, following that will be the deployment of the parachutes and then splashdown. That's right. So just a quick recap in case if you uh, have just joined us recently. Uh, we have departed from the International Space Station. Dragon completed a series of four departure burns in a, uh, a slowly choreographed maneuver. And uh, now we have already jettisoned the trunk of the the, the Dragon spacecraft. We have completed the, the, the deorbit burn, and now we're just starting to come back down through the Earth's atmosphere and the final leg on Dragon's way home. <laughs> That's right, so that nose cone's closed, and we're just gonna be standing by to wait until we go through that entry interface. Again, that'll be about 20 minutes from now. Uh, and then once it's down through there, it's time for the parachutes. And we talked about the parachutes a little while ago, and we should hopefully get to see those parachutes maybe from the plane. Uh, but once it's down beneath the cloud deck, so we should be able to see them from the boats that'll be standing by out there at the recovery zone. And it comes in two different stages. Can you walk us through the parachutes real quick? Yeah. So with the parachutes, we will have the drogue parachutes. Those are the smaller chutes that will come out that will slow the vehicle down uh, a little bit. And then we will have the main parachutes. Those are clearly visible by the orange and white coloring on them. Very iconic if you've looked, watched the pre our previous Dragon Splashdowns for uh, the cargo resupply missions. So we will have that. And then that's what will slow the vehicle down enough to have a safe splashdown in the water. So um, at this point, another fun fact about Dragon, um, in the return to Earth, the seats inside the capsule at this point have actuated or turned into the re-entry position. So depending on what phase of the mission we are in, the seats will actually um, actuate or, or adjust the angle to make sure that the G-forces that the astronauts will be experiencing um, are in the right places. So. Um, with that being said, we will take a quick break uh, as we <laughs> active operations here at SpaceX. <laughs> um, so with that uh, being said, we will take a quick break. Be sure to stay tuned with us as we um, go through this period of anticipated blackout with the Dragon capsule. We'll be back in just a few as we uh, come back in anticipation of that parachute deployment. Stick around.
And if you're just now joining us, we have had a successful deorbit burn. So that was the last major milestone. Oh, we've also confirmed that the nose cone is closed. The hook's all engaged. And so now we're just waiting for Dragon to begin making its way through the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, that deorbit burn lasted a little over 15 minutes and was reported that it was done successfully, no issues, and Dragon is now on its way home. You're continuing to get some pretty great views from the boats out there in the splashdown zone. Uh, and we're also going to be on the lookout for some video possibly from an aircraft that we have in the area. Uh, one of NASA's WB-57 research planes uh, is going to be trying to get some views of Dragon and the chute deploy and actually coming down under the parachutes. There are some clouds in the area, so the boats might not see it right away, but once it's underneath those cloud decks, uh, they'll have some pretty great views of it coming down. So there on your screen, again, you can see our primary recovery vessel. Uh, that is, whoop, well, there it went. <laughs> uh, but that is uh, uh, our recovery ship that is fully equipped with medical quarters for checkouts. Once we do have crew uh, on board Dragon and for our upcoming missions, they will be able to come out of the capsule and get a full medical checkout immediately afterward. There's also a helipad there where a helicopter can land, it, land in the event that we might need to get them back to port. Uh, sooner than what the boat may be able to go. And there on your screen, you can actually see, I mentioned earlier, the, 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 the lift that will uh, bring Dragon out of the water has actuated into its recovery position. So that you can see on the right-hand side of your screen at the end of the boat. And that is what will actually take Dragon out of the water, lift it up, and then place it into its nest, which uh, is the official term for it, uh, on the ship. And then that would be considered um, the, the end, at least whenever we get to that point, that will be the end of our webcast today. Uh, but at this point, we're still waiting for the, uh, the parachutes to deploy and then for the entire recovery operation, which, like I mentioned before, the recovery team has practiced this, but obviously not with a vessel that has come down from the International Space Station yet. So a lot of firsts that we'll be seeing today, and we're really excited to be able to share that with you. Yeah, and if you missed the very beginning, the fun historical tidbit we have we had for today was it's been almost 50 years to the day since we've landed a spacecraft designed for humans in the Atlantic Ocean. That last one was Apollo 9, and that was back on March 13th, 1969. It was actually supposed to land in the Pacific, but ended up shooting for the Atlantic, and that was the last time they landed one in that area. So it's going to be <laughs> exciting to see this water recovery. Uh, all of our crew members for the last couple of years, well, basically since we stopped flying the space shuttle, have come down for land landings over in Kazakhstan on the Russian Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, and, but in the not too distant future, we'll have crew members uh, Doug, uh, Doug Hurley and Bob Bankin uh, still waking up. Uh, <laughs> they'll be on the Dragon uh, for the Demo 2 mission a little bit later this year. So everything looking really good so far. We're going to continue to stand by and wait for that entry interface. We are just about 20 minutes away from when we're expecting to actually see Dragon under those parachutes. So not much longer, good things to come. There's a lot of anticipation. There's a crowd growing uh, behind me here at SpaceX headquarters. Our mission control center is just down there. And the, you can probably hear the voices in, in, in the, the room around us. And the crowd is definitely starting to grow in anticipation of Dragon's reappearance. Uh, so with that being said, we will take a quick break as we await for Dragon to re-enter and for those parachute deployments. Uh, stick around. We'll be back in just a few.
so we're getting a bit of a treat here. You're getting a live view inside the Dragon capsule as again, it's getting closer and closer to that entry interface coming through the Earth's atmosphere and then splashing down in the Atlantic Ocean. But first, we have a very special guest, somebody <laughs> who's gonna be on board a Dragon in the not too distant future, NASA astronaut Bob Bankin. Bob, thanks for being here. Thanks for taking a couple of minutes. I know you're following along with the teams. There's a lot of excitement. How are you feeling about the mission so far? Well, I think I said this before when we were out here for the uh, ascent phase and docking, just super excited. You know, of course, this one is the precursor for our mission that's uh, upcoming here. And so when this one's done successfully, we'll be one step closer to our flight. That's awesome. Yeah. So what is in store for you between now and that flight? What kind of preparations do you have left to do? Yeah, that's a great question. We have a significant amount of uh, training that we need to go through. So we'll walk through all the various phases of flight. So we'll do pre-launch. We'll get suited. We'll do that here in uh, Hawthorne in the Buck. We'll do a walkthrough at the Kennedy Space Center, mm -hmm. actually on the launch pad learn a little bit more about the emergency escape system if we should need that uh, uh, prior to launching into space. And so uh, we'll walk through all those different scenarios. Then we'll head back uh, uh, out here again for a couple of other events associated with docking and of course with the re-entry. Awesome. And so we're getting views inside the Dragon spacecraft and I mean, a camera's okay, but it can't do the real <laughs> thing justice. What's it like to be like in a spacecraft when you're coming back through and everything's heating up? Yeah, there's a couple of pieces of coming back through the atmosphere. The first one is really emotional for those of us who've uh, seen a lot of spacecraft come back. It's just a, it's very special to, to kind of go through that experience. And it's a, it's a physical thing as well, as you actually see the light from the uh, atmosphere as it heats up the external uh, portions of the spacecraft. You see some orange lights flickering, the plasma kind of go past the windows. The windows will be down in our, near our feet uh, on this vehicle. That'll be our, our, our closest view out the window per se, but uh, uh, it's definitely something that we'll be able to see and know the outside of the vehicle is going through something pretty severe and uh, we'll be hoping it takes care of us as it takes us through entry. That's incredible. I can't even imagine what that experience yeah, it's might remarkable. be like. like. Again, there's the physical piece of it. You can, you know, sensations that come in with the light, but there's also the emotion of knowing that you're taking all that energy that you put yeah. into the vehicle to get it into orbit. It's all got to come back out so that you can get back to the ground safely. So it's been a while since you've been to space. Is there anything you're really looking forward to when you get to the space station? Anything like what's what's your bucket list once you get back up there? You know, for me, when I get back to the International Space Station, I really am looking forward to seeing it completely complete. I was pretty close with my flight. Uh, we put the uh, cupola uh, on the underside of the space station. Oh. One of the things close to the, the, the construction complete on the International Space Station. So I'm looking forward to getting back in there and actually experiencing uh, sunrises and sunsets again. They're just uh, remarkable from on orbit. Not quite the same as they are from the ground. and uh, can't get that anyplace else. Yeah. <laughs> Last question for you. I'm sure you've been following along uh, on social media. You've seen the photos of our zero G indicator. Mm -hmm. um, now he's not coming back until you bring him back for us. So you'll have a little bit of time to play with him while you're on station. Is there anything that you would like to teach a uh, little earthy while you're up on station with him? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I didn't actually realize that uh, little Earthy was going to stay on board the <laughs> space Earthy station until so, uh, Lee Rosen, one of your uh, yeah. uh, folks here at SpaceX, come and let us know uh, when we when we sat down to watch on docking, and he said, "Hey, we're going to need Earthy back. You've got to bring <laughs> him back." And so uh, I think our plan is to have him teach us. He's going to welcome us aboard probably when we get there. And I think Ann and David and Oleg have uh, trained him up well. So hopefully he can walk us through the emergency brief and he's a full-fledged <laughs> station crew member by the time that we get there. Well, it definitely looks like he's been getting a crash course in just about everything. Yeah, he should have it all and he ought to be able to transfer it to <laughs> us. That's part of being a, a crew member that arrives and takes over responsibilities on the International Space Station. That's very cool. Well, we certainly look forward to him coming back as well as you and Doug in our Demo 2 mission in a couple of months. So it'll be very exciting. Very much looking forward to it, as you might imagine. <laughs> Us All as right. well. Thank you. Well, we're going to get back to the re-entry interface. Bob, we're going to let you go watch along because, again, vested interest in all, everything that's happening. <laughs> Thanks so much for jumping upstairs real quick and talking about this. Thank you again. Thank Dan. you very much. <laughs> Thank you. So with that, we... Uh, are awaiting the deployment, or excuse me, the, the, the final phase of the re-entry of Dragon spacecraft as it's coming back through the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, I'm still kind of reeling from his comments about what it's like to actually come barreling through the Earth's atmosphere, uh, something that you see depicted in movies and TV shows, of course, but 
to hear it live from the source is pretty cool. And that's exactly what Dragon and Ripley are doing right now. Uh, so we brought you a live view of that just a couple of minutes ago. Um, that was pretty cool that we were able to get that shot. Like we yeah. said, uh, plasma will be building up on the exterior of the vehicle as it's re-entering the atmosphere. So um, there's a blackout period that we are, you know, we were expecting. Uh, and that's where we're at right now. So, but we can't bring you view of Ripley on her journey back to the Atlantic Ocean. You can see a view of our recovery ship there. Uh, like I said before, we can now see that the lift arms have actuated out into the recovery position. And they're like that in anticipation of Dragon uh, being pulled in to position closer to that the, the end of the ship and being lifted up into the, into the um, recovery nest. And you got to imagine the teams out there on the ocean are ready for this to come home. And again, since they're about 200, give or take, uh, nautical miles out to sea, they actually left yesterday. So they've been out on the water for some time. So they're ready and waiting. <laughs> again, the, the prime team is on that ghost searcher. And that's a bunch of SpaceX technicians who are going to be responsible for going out on some fast boats uh, that will deploy from that prime ship and they'll begin just basically getting the capsule stable and then bringing it in closer to ultimately get hoisted up on the ship. Also going off to make sure that they get those parachutes as those get jettisoned from the capsule at pretty much just at the moment of touchdown. So uh, we're just gonna be ready to watch all of that unfold pretty soon. We should be seeing those parachutes in about 10 or 11 minutes mm -hmm. from now right after Dragon begins that final plunge through the Earth's atmosphere. So we're getting a lot closer. Things are really going to pick up once we get those first views of Dragon over the uh, the Atlantic there. Absolutely. So like Dan just said, we've got about 10 minutes until we see the first deployment, which are the deployments of the drogue parachutes. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be, we'll be back in a few as we get closer to parachute deployment.
so this is a view from that WB-57 airplane. You were looking at dragons streaking across the sky on its re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere, aiming for a splashdown in just a little while from now. So it's pretty exciting that we get this shot right now as it is our first view from planet Earth of the Dragon capsule since it lifted off from Cape Canaveral uh, just several days ago. I will say this is this is a pretty rare treat to be able to see this here. And again, this this video is coming from a NASA airplane that uh, we're flying around that recovery zone there, a WB-57. It's commonly used for a lot of atmospheric studies and other mm -hmm. science missions. Uh, but able to put a tracking camera on it to try and get uh, this uh, re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere today. We're hearing that they should have AOSO acquisition, acquisition of signal back with the Dragon spacecraft. Right now it's about 46 kilometers in altitude. Yeah, so just for orientation purposes, if you've seen our, our launches previously, you might be familiar with the angling of this as takeoff. Uh, reminder, this is re-entry. Um, the plane is below the Dragon spacecraft and the camera is looking upward as it's coming over the spacecraft. So it looks like uh, from the orientation of the, the imagery there that Dragon is going up when in fact it is, it is still coming back down towards Earth. And again, just keeping you on the timeline. So we actually acquired signal uh, about a minute ahead of when it was expected, where we're gonna be looking for those initial drogue shoot deployments at about 41 minutes after the hour. So after Dragon gets a little bit lower down, we're gonna be keeping an eye out. You're gonna see the drogue shoots deploy initially, followed by those four main parachutes, uh, much larger and able to slow the vehicle down for a much softer splashdown in the ocean. We should be getting that drogue, sh drogue shoot deployment in just about two minutes now. And just heard that we're now below 30 kilometers. And if you're just now tuning in, this is Dragon. This is Dragon coming home. This is from a camera on board a chase plane there at the, the landing zone over the Atlantic, about 200 or so nautical miles off the coast of Florida. We're under 30 kilometers, continuing to descend. And the next milestone we're gonna be looking for is parachute deployment. And hearing we're now about 20 kilometers in altitude. Dragon spacecraft continuing to descend. It's now subsonic, so already starting to slow down thanks to the error braking, basically slamming into that Earth's atmosphere, causes a lot of friction and allows the vehicle to eventually reach its terminal velocity, basically. Uh, and then those parachutes are gonna kick in. So there you have visual confirmation of the deployment of our drogue parachutes. This is the first of two parachute deployments. And so those drogue chutes do the initial slowing and then they're ultimately gonna pull out the four main parachutes responsible for really slowing the spacecraft down prior to that flashing. You can hear cheering here at SpaceX headquarters as the employees that have gathered around our mission control center are sharing the same view as you. Uh, what a gorgeous shot of Dragon coming back down.
over the next few seconds, we will see those main parachutes do exactly like that begin to expand as they capture more air, further decelerating the Dragon vehicle down to the Atlantic Ocean. Really can't ask for a more picture perfect <laughs> shot than that. And yes, all, all four shoots now deployed. It's going to continue to descend. It's going to continue to slow down and then ultimately splash down in the Atlantic there. We're now under a kilometer in altitude. Just about 750 meters to go. In case if you're just joining us, you can see on your screen there, Dragon re-entering, has just re-entered the Earth's atmosphere after departing from the International Space Station. We have a gorgeous shot of four healthy parachutes um, deployed and slowing the vehicle down as it is approaching the surface of the Atlantic Ocean uh, off the coast of Florida. And it's continuing to descend under those chutes. We just passed 500 meters. Everything continuing to look good via reports to all the flight control teams. Now we're at about 400 meters. And just passing 300 meters, continuing to descend. We might be right on time. We were planning on splashing down at about 5.45 a.m. Pacific, and we're getting real close to that bingo time. Just past 200 meters. And we have confirmation that Dragon is now under 100 meters, uh, is 100 meters above the, the surface of the ocean. So next up, spin, standing by for splashdown. now in recovery. That splashdown came right on time, 5.45 a.m. Pacific, 8.45 a.m. over on the East Coast. The teams that have been ready and waiting, they were staged just a few nautical miles away. They're gonna start moving in now. You can see those two fast approach boats already speeding their way towards the capsule. While there's still a little bit more work to be done at this point, like we said, uh, the recovery team has to safe the vehicle and then uh, lift it onto the recovery vessel. Uh, however, obviously by the excited cheers uh, here at Mission Control, the splashdown is an enormous event for us uh, in terms of the safe re-entry, um, or excuse me, the safe return to Earth from the International Space Station. That's right, and you'll, you'll notice two boats on their way. One boat actually responsible for beginning to safe the vehicle and get it ready to go up onto the boat. The other one's going to go off and collect those parachutes as those four main chutes actually get jettisoned away from the spacecraft as soon as the vehicle detects that it's splashed down in the water. But if you missed it, I'm, I'm really sorry because uh, that was really <laughs> cool was to beautiful. see. Uh, but Dragon did splash down at 5.45 a.m. Pacific time, 8.45 a.m. over there on the East Coast where they're now moving in on a Dragon spacecraft in the water, ready to recover it. Exactly. So like we said, the recovery team has been ready and waiting for a Dragon, splash, for, me, for a dragon splashdown. Uh, it's been quite the morning 
evening. Dan and I have been here since yesterday night, <laughs> uh, bringing you coverage from uh, Dragon departure from the International Space, Sta Space Station now all the way down to Splashdown. So uh, it's a great next milestone, and we are excited to bring you coverage of the recovery operations as well. Um, but we have a few minutes before that happens, so I'm, we're going to take a, a break momentarily, and we will continue bringing coverage uh, as the recovery operations progress.
We're going to take a quick break from the operations because right now we have Benji Reed. He's the director of the Commercial Crew Mission Management here at SpaceX. Benji, first off, congratulations. Successful splashdown, successful end of demo, <laughs> or demo one. What's it been like to watch through this mission? What are your thoughts? What are you looking forward to? Have you had a chance to catch your breath? <laughs> no, but I'm super <laughs> excited. I, thank you for having me up here. Um, to be honest, I'm kind of shaking, and I'm super you know, excited. It was an incredible journey to get to this moment. Um, the teams have just done an amazing job, both the, the SpaceX and the NASA teams jointly. Um, it's uh, fundamentally, this is like a great day for the nation, for SpaceX, for NASA, for all of us, really for the world. Um, I think it was Ann who said this is the first time in 40 years that we have a, a spacecraft designed for humans to fly. And not only did she fly and go to the space station, do everything she was supposed to do, but we brought her home safe and sound, landing here in the Atlanta. Just amazing. Um, I can't believe how well the whole mission is done. Um, I, pretty much, I think on every point, everything's been nailed all the way along, um, particularly this last piece, you know, we're all very excited to see as we go through re-entry and parachute, drogue deploy, then main deploy, splash down, everything happened just perfectly, right on time, um, the way that we expected it to. Almost Beautiful. down to the second. <laughs> Almost down to the second, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, as, as a team, um, SpaceX, we're, you know, we're here, we're just super honored to have the opportunity to have, to have done this mission, to have worked with NASA to work through this. Um, you know, and Demo 1 is fundamentally this first major milestone in our process towards certification. I always like to remind everybody that, like, this is a whole system, right? There's Crew Dragon, but there's the Falcon that's uh, gonna be certified to fly humans. Um, there's also all the ground systems, the operations, our entire factory and production system. Everything that we do is being certified to be able to fly astronauts safely. Um, and this is a huge step towards that. Um, you know, as we kind of look back over what happened over the last few days, which is, seems incredible to me, and really it's the culmination of years of work to get us just to this day. Um, we had launch, Crew Dragon deployed, mm -hmm. beautiful free flight. One of the things that's hard to test when you're, um, when you're on the ground is how, micro, how fluids work in microgravity. So things like the, the prop system and all of the, uh, the right. propulsion, the, the, and, and, and what's amazing is that worked just well, worked perfectly, just like we expected. Um, we got to station, we docked, and uh, you know, it's the first time I think in history that a commercial vehicle and also mm -hmm. an American vehicle has docked autonomously to yep. the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. So that's just super cool. Um, loaded with all kinds of sensors, all kinds of tests that we did. We all met, we met Ripley. Yeah. <laughs> we got to see, you know, she's loaded with sensors so we can understand exactly all the forces that'll happen on the crew as they come, as, uh, as they're launched and, and then sent to station and come home. Um, we got to meet the Little Earth guy. <laughs> I heard he's going to stay on station. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, and so that'll be for Bob and Doug to retrieve. So that's going to be exciting. Um, undocking, of course. Some more free flight. And then we came home. Jettison the trunk. Mm -hmm. uh, close the nose cone. And then again, like I said, just beautiful parachute deployment. Everything the way we expected. All of these gazillions of tests that we've been doing on parachutes. Um, all of the analysis and work that we've done on understanding the aerodynamics of reentry and, 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 and coming home, everything's just wonderful. The important thing now um, is we take all of this data that we've learned. We love data. And we love data, <laughs> right? I mean, fundamentally, we're engineers and engineering-driven yep. behavior, right? It's what, it's what we got to do. So we take all that great data, and we're going to um, apply that to the next steps. So what's coming up next, I think, because I'm... It, Believe it or not, is excited and like still shaking as I am about this return. <laughs> um, there's there's a lot more to do, yeah. right? Because our ultimate goal is to be able to continue to staff space station, right, and provide astronauts rides up to space, give them a safe, a safe place to be, safe place to come home in, and uh, and do crew rotations every six months. So how do we get there? So we finished demo one, huge milestone. Next up, we take that data, we apply it, we learn from it, and we're gonna go to our in-flight abort test, similar to that pad abort test that we did um, a few years ago, um, except this time we put the Dragon, and actually the same Dragon that we flew on Demo 1. We're gonna take that and put it on top of a Falcon 9, launch it, get it going super fast, <laughs> get it to test conditions, and then, um, uh, and, and then escape it off of the rocket, and again, do the same thing, bring it home safely on its parachutes, land it in the ocean. And then uh, from there, uh, after we get that done, we go to demo two. And that's kind of like, wow, that's mm -hmm. the big prize, right? Because that's going to be um, sending, sending Bob and Doug 
you know, our astronauts and our partners and our friends, sending them up on Dragon, taking them to the station safely, bringing them home safely. Um, and then with that done, we'll go through final full certification and start those six month rotation missions, which we're just all so excited about. You know, I, as <laughs> it's important to take kind of take a, take a step back and think about all of what it took to get here, all the work from all the joint teams, NASA and SpaceX, um, all the support that we've had from, you know, friends and family. Um, and really, I think the most important thing is that on behalf of all of the 6,000 um, people here at SpaceX, um, we really want to thank NASA, we want to thank the space station, the international partners, um, and thank the American public for um, their support and partnership as we go through this. We're really proud to be part of this endeavor. Thank you for being here with us. Um, it is early Friday morning here in, in Hawthorne, so for those of us that work here at SpaceX, we still got a full workday going, and obviously we've already been working on Demo 2 for a while, even though yes. today was the Demo 1 day, so I'm sure that you, like me, will continue our work on, I'm, on I'm Demo well, 2 I'm for right the rest of the day. I'm going into <laughs> meetings to start talking about the next step that we've already been working on Demo 2. So. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, congratulations to your team as well on the success of the last week. Uh, really, it's been uh, awesome to, for us to be able to, to share the hard work of all SpaceX employees with the public. Um, so with that being said, thanks for being here. Um, we're going to take a quick break um, as we bring you more coverage of the recovery operations, which you can see is ongoing on your screen there on the left. Uh, so stick around, we'll be back in just a couple.
waiting to get some video back uh, from those recovery teams out there in the Atlantic. For now, though, we do have another guest for today's broadcast, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine, who's standing by over at NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C. So I'll send it over to you, uh, Mr. Bridenstine. Thoughts about today's mission, what this means for NASA, and what we have to look forward to in the future. Absolutely. This is uh, an amazing achievement in American history. In fact, uh, I said on a press conference at 4 in the morning after it launched that this was the dawn of a new era in American human spaceflight and really in the spaceflight for the entire world because of all of our international partners on the International Space Station. But this achievement um, spans many administrations. It spans many NASA administrators. I want to start by, by thanking Mike Griffin, who was the NASA administrator that really got this program going during the George W. Bush administration. And of course, Charlie Bolden was the administrator for eight years under President Barack Obama. He kept this program strong. Uh, and then of course, Robert Lightfoot was uh, immediately preceded me. And here we are today with, uh, with this amazing achievement and, and the current president, President Trump, his his budgets for NASA have been as strong um, as, as, as they have been in my adult lifetime. So this really is a, an American achievement that spans many, um, many generations of NASA administrators and in fact, you know, over a decade of work by the NASA team. So I want to congratulate, first of all, the NASA Commercial Crew Program, all of the amazing engineers that have been involved from the very beginning. I want to thank, of course, the amazing achievement of SpaceX and their entire team and the vision of Elon Musk and, and what he has done to help really rejuvenate uh, this, this very inspirational moment for uh, the, this new era in American human spaceflight. So this is really a, a, an, ama an amazing achievement for all of America, but it's not just for all of America right now. It goes back in time. There are so many people that, that deserve credit. And, um, and, and, and really what's unique now is that NASA can be a customer. And, and I know there's a long way to go. We, we launched an uncrewed spacecraft here. Of course, we have Demo-2, which will be a crewed spacecraft. Uh, and between now and then, we have uh, a, a pad abort that we, that we need to test as well. And so these are all, these are all capabilities that, um, that, that are leading to a day where we are launching American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. Um, I have heard, when I was a member of Congress, I heard over and over again, how do we keep constancy of purpose? Because it seems like we lurch from one administration to the next and changing visions and changing budgets. How do we keep constancy? Well, this is a perfect example of a program. Um, when we talk about these things that NASA does, it takes, in many cases, decades to achieve this kind of capability. Um, and the constancy of purpose here for all of these years um, is important. But now NASA can be a customer. We can be one customer of many customers for human space flight in what we believe will be a very robust commercial marketplace for space operations. And we're going to have numerous providers that are going to compete on cost and innovation. And of course, that's how we're able to do what we've seen now where rockets are being reused. The idea that we can reuse rockets and drive down cost and increase access to space, just an amazing capability for our country, an amazing capability for the world. Just like we reuse airplanes, there's going to come a day when we're reusing rockets and space flight is going to become more routine. We're not there yet. We have a long way to go. Uh, but this is an amazing, an amazing achievement in this path um, to really a sustainable return to the moon, quite frankly which is my charge the president has given me to get us back to the moon. So we're driving down costs for low Earth orbit. We're commercializing low Earth orbit, not just with launch, but also eventually with space stations, with human activities, where NASA can be a customer for human activities in low Earth orbit. And then we can use the taxpayer resources um, that, that are bestowed upon us. We can use those resources to do exploration, to go further, to go back to the moon sustainably, where we can stay at the moon and ultimately go on to Mars. And, and this, is, this is one small piece in that really grand vision, but it is, this is no small piece. This is an amazing achievement in the history of the United States of America, and it just really exemplifies what we can achieve 
when we maintain that constancy of purpose. All right. And thank you, Administrator Jim Bridenstine again, joining us just there from NASA headquarters over in Washington, D.C. We are still waiting to get some views from all the recovery teams. They mm -hmm. are still in that recovery process. Again, we expected it to be between 30 minutes and an hour until they get the, the Dragon capsule back up on the boat. So before we do get those feeds back, we're going to head out to JSC real quick, the Johnson Space Center in Houston, where we have a few more folks standing by, uh, including Steve Stitch, who is uh, the Deputy Program Manager for NASA's Commercial Crew Program. Uh, we also have Mike Hopkins, a NASA astronaut, and one of those uh, astronauts already assigned to a future Dragon mm -hmm. mission. And then Mr. Kenny Todd, he's the Operations Integration Manager for the International Space Station. So guys, I'll send it over to you real quick. Offer us your thoughts on how this mission's unfolded and what's ahead in the future. Hey, thank you, Dan. Uh, hey, it's great to be here uh, representing the Commercial Crew Program. Just what an outstanding day uh, to be part of our program. You know, we uh, left our contracts in 2014 for these first missions, and to sit here today uh, and talk about Demo 1 and how great the flight went and what we're going to learn from it, it's just amazing. I'd like to congratulate uh, the SpaceX team. A phenomenal job getting the vehicles ready and executing the flight. Our whole NASA team uh, that worked the mission. And if you just think about the enormity of what uh, happened in this flight and all the prep that went into it, uh, getting the pad refurbished um, at 39A, getting the flight control room set up, getting the vehicles built, getting the Falcon 9 ready, all the analysis, uh, all the mission support that went into it, the sims and the practice uh, leading up to this flight over the last year or so, just been a tremendous job. I, I would say one of the things that we learned during this flight is the, the great uh, relationship we have between the program and SpaceX. I would say our teams work seamlessly uh, back and forth with SpaceX, not only in the lead up to the flight, but in how we manage the flight through the Dragon mission management team, and then also working with Kenny Todd and the space station program uh, space station program did a phenomenal job supporting our our, uh, our program while we were docked at station on the way to station, and the international partnership as well. So, uh, really great, great opportunity for this mission. The last 24 hours have been exciting for us. You know, we closed the hatches yesterday around noon, got into the undock today about 1:31 a.m. Did a few small separants to get away from station. If you watched that uh, on NASA TV, that was that was flawless. Did about three separants to get down below station. Executed the deorbit burn at about 6:52 a.m. Central Time, and then landed at just a few minutes ago at 7:45. Uh, the vehicle is doing well. The the recovery crews are out. Uh, they're on the scene. Uh, they've already s been around the spacecraft and made sure it was secure for personnel. Uh, you might have seen that one of the parachutes happened. It was a very calm day with very low sea states and low winds. One of the chutes kind of landed on the Dragon capsule. They already got that off. Uh, so that's going really well. It'll probably take 30 to minutes to maybe an hour to get it uh, back on the ship. Uh, but then when you kind of look overall at this mission, it was a great dress rehearsal for Demo 2. We learned a, a phenomenal amount in the pre-launch time frame about how to load the vehicle and thinking forward to how we'll put the crews in the vehicle. You know, the ascent profile for this flight, uh, we practiced the exact profile that Mike Hopkins and others will fly very soon, uh, Doug Hurley and Bob Binken. We had the abort system, uh, the crew escape system in Dragon actually enabled for this flight and we were able to, to see how that worked and we'll get the data back and look at those triggers and how it performed. You know, on orbit, we got a lot of great data on the vehicle in terms of the thermal performance, power performance. The vehicle really did better than we expected. And then the rendezvous was, was phenomenal as we came in, checked out those sensors, uh, the link to space station work, the command link, watching the vehicle come in, and then have a real precise docking and seeing how the docking system performed. So that was phenomenal. And then during the attached phase, of course, we had cargo ops which will do the same thing on uh, both Demo 2 and then the Crew 1 and other missions. And then we did a robotic survey of the, of the vehicle to look at the thermal protection system and other systems, and, and that re went really well. I will say one thing, this mission, you know, it was only six days long. It was a sprint uh, from start to finish. And, and thinking about, you know, where we've been in operations in that sprint, I think Kenny would probably tell you the same thing. It was just a phenomenal job by the team. 
And then, of course, today, you know, the undocking, uh, watching how those systems performed, that went flawless. It's a very tight sequence between undocking and the deorbit burn, how the nose cone performed, uh, how the deorbit burn was executed and the entry was, was phenomenal. We did have uh, uh, Riley on board, a, uh, a test dummy, and that's gonna give us a lot of important data for the accelerations during both the ascent phase and then the entry phase under the parachutes and then landing. So we'll collect that data and look at that. You know, over the next few weeks, uh, we'll be doing post-flight reviews. In fact, just next week, we'll have one for, uh, for the um, launch vehicle and the ground segment at KSC. We'll start reviewing that. And then subsequently, we'll do reviews uh, with SpaceX on the orbit phase of the mission. Uh, this flight really sets us up well for the rest of the year. Uh, the very vehicle that's, that's in the water in the Atlantic today will be the in-flight abort vehicle. And so one of the first things that will happen is the vehicle will come back to KSC and, and go over uh, into the processing area and start getting refurbed for, uh, for the in-flight abort test, which should be in the, in the summer front time frame and the June time frame. And then uh, demo two vehicles at Hawthorne getting built for the first crewed mission. Uh, that's in progress and going well. 